So, what was rural uh, 2030? Um, you can say that it was an early start uh, as a preparation for the next funding period. Uh, we wanted to look in the future and then look the development needs, uh, what we can identify already now. And also step two, we wanted to know how to cleverly respond to these needs uh, in, in the future. Those were the aims. About the process, um, we actually we had a rather compact process. It lasted only about three months. Um, uh, we had also uh, we have two two levels in our work. So we have a open platform, e, e platform for everyone to participate. Uh, it gathered ideas, comments about the rural future and the needs in the future. Uh, but perhaps the most important steps were two foresight camps, uh, and and in the first one we were shaping future together. Uh, so uh, we were thinking that how the rural uh, Finland will be 2030. Uh, and that was a very interesting discussion, uh, foresighting discussion. The latter foresight camp, we were uh, thinking uh, when we have that kind of future, what was th thought out in the first foresight camp. So what kind of needs in rural development we have? And the third thing I like to highlight was uh, um, special webinars. We tend to uh, be in the bubbles, so we wanted to break the bubbles and, and uh, take experts from other bubbles to our bubble. And we were uh, through these web webinars, we have a, a food for thoughts about how the values and, and the societies are changing, how the technology is changing, how the every, everyday living is changing, and, and the feedback about those webinars were actually very, very good. Then about a different expectation for the rural areas. Um, we were actually able, able to spot seven different types of people. Uh, and each of these groups, uh, they have a different needs and different hopes for rural areas. For example, we have an average Joe who is a migrant looking for work and, adu adu uh, and livelihood. And, and for the average Joe, the countryside suits uh, his or her current life situation. Uh, then we have, a, a f for example, multi-locational people, independent gig worker who goes in and out of communities. And for those group of people, the countryside is an adventure. And these are the seven categories. And through these categories of different kind of people, we were able to have a grassroots level thinking what are the different needs in practice for these archetypes we, we were able to spot? And then I come the results. Um, results of our process. Um, we were thinking a lot, what is the common factor uh, in, in this variation of, of, of people and, and, uh, and, and segments of people and their hopes and needs? And we were able to combine that the uh, combining factor is perceived well-being. Of course, individuals are the only ones who can define their all well-being, but the well-being is, is the com combining factor. And the basis of the well-being, uh, you can categorize it inclusion, competence, livelihood, infrastructure, investments, and interaction. For example, everyone should have, a, have an opportunity to develop their skills especially SMEs were, were mentioned in competence. In, li in livelihood, we need to have a new sources of income and new forms of entrepreneurship, infrastructure, good EIT uh, connections, investments, um, investing in rural areas should be attractive, profitable, and easy and sustainable. Interaction, rural, rural and urban are, connection, uh, are connected uh, to each other. And then social inclusion, um, social inclusion, the rural area should be open-minded, agile, and a communal, and, and uh, that's the one of the big priorities. Then I end up with comments. We think that developing a people-centered countryside is possible. Uh, the success is built on competence, activity, and interaction. Uh, we must bring together people with their skills and resources uh, we have to combine all available sources of funding. Uh, we have to invent the new ones as well. And 
good IT connections, good broadband that is needed. And if I may, so I have a hopes for this uh, uh, this work of long-term vision. So um, um, at least uh, we think that this Rural 2030 process, although it was a compact, it was quick, uh, uh, it was nice. It was it, it was it would be nice to update our our situation now after and and we are between the COVID crisis. Uh, so what kind of uh, how how it has changed our mindset uh, and also now when this work is on EU level as well so it would be nice to have a comparison what kind of EU level discussion we have in in our uh, rural futures and and what kind of discussion and results there are in in different member states and with that uh, information update also our process thank you. Mm -hmm.